Praise be to Jesus Christ and welcome to Catholic Forum. I'm your host, Deacon Jim Thorndall. I want to welcome all those who are, might be seeing us on uh, public TV and those who might be joining us on podcast. You know, we have this profound sense in our Catholic Church of really journeying with the Lord and really having this understanding of, of how we come into a greater uh, relationship with, the, with our Heavenly Father and with Christ. You know, and really to really come into that type of relationship, it really calls us to be countercultural. You know, and what does that mean to be countercultural? It really means to be going against the grain of what the world sees. The secular world really wants to draw us away from this relationship with the Lord. You know, and when you really start this going to this journey, you start going down this road, the Lord can get hold of you. And you start drawing into this beautiful and profound understanding of living a different type of lifestyle. And that's exactly what we're going to be talking about here because I have three beautiful people who really have heard the call of Christ and they've really started to come into the, and really living in the Lord and living this countercultural life. I have Bob Croft, who is a uh, Dominican, a secular Dominican. I have uh, Barb Demonsky, who's a Carmelite. And of course, my friend Ray Bravenu from my parish, who's uh, a Franciscan. So thank you all for being here. Yeah. It's a privilege to have you here. You know, this is really living a countercultural life, isn't it? Yes. yes. It's yes. really going against the grain of the world. And uh, sometimes it's not that easy, but it always is joyful. You know, that's, that's the understanding of, of living this life. But, you know, I want to explore a little bit of the different dimensions of the, of the Franciscans, of the Carmelites, and Dominicans, and what makes you separate and yet what brings you together as brothers and sisters in this. So, Ray, seeing as you're sitting close here, yes, let's, uh, let's start with the Franciscans. What do you how want? did you how did you get how did you hear a call to this? <clears throat> I had a rather prayerful life before becoming a Franciscan, and my son changed colleges and went to the Franciscan University of Steubenville, and so my wife and I drove him there. And when we were there, um, something there just really moved us. The Holy Spirit was really talking to us. And I didn't know the language, so I didn't know what he was saying, but I was yeah. being moved um, spiritually about something. And I looked at my wife, and we was going to leave, and we saw the parents crying because they were leaving our kids. And I looked at my wife, and I said, you know, we should just give him the keys, and we stay. <laughs> and um, surprisingly, my wife thought the very same thing at that moment. Um, so we went home, and we heard that there was going to be an inquiry for uh, Franciscans. And I thought, geez, I just came from that Franciscan University. I wonder what that's about. So I went to the inquiry. Apparently, my wife had the same idea because she was there too. Neither one of us knew that we were going to it. <laughs> so then not, nothing to do with our communication, our marriage. It was very good. <laughs> but we were just curious what this was about. And um, I just really enjoyed uh, the thoughts of becoming a Franciscan. We're going to go a little deeper in that in a minute, but I just want to get, get a kind of a story from each one. Barb, um, a Carmelite. What, what drew you to the Carmelites? Carmelite. Um, when I was 12 years old, I remember going down to DeSales um, Religious Store in Fulton. Sure. And they always had a shelf in the store, and it was kind of high up, but I saw this statue of this nun, a Carmelite nun, happened to be St. Teresa of La Sioux, and I, I had a little bit of money, so I, I bought it and brought it home. had no idea who she was. Or After that, I kind of looked into who she was. Then I ended up having a teacher named Sister John Therese, mm. who filled me in a little bit more. Um, so that was when I was 12. I always wanted to be a religious. Well, school happened, life happened, yep. and, and then I got married and raised a family. But I was always connected with the Carmelites at the monastery on Valley yes. for years. And so um, I think it was just knowing them and being going to Holy Hour at the monastery, stepping yes. in, leaving the world out there and going in there. It was something I really desired. So when the time was right and I could devote everything I had yeah. to the Carmelite Third Order, then I joined in 2006. Praise be to God. Yeah, that's, so. that's a, we'll get back to that too. But mm -hmm. uh, um, Bob, I want to get to you and, and the Dominican journey. You know, obviously you weren't a Dominican for all your life. So you haven't lived all your life. But I mean, what, what happened to you? How did, how did this, how did you pursue this? Well, I um, yeah, I've always been, you know, into prayer and um, always been very much in love with the church. And I initially, um, did discern with the Franciscans 
at St. Anthony's on the okay. northwest side okay. for a bit. And I, but I was more drawn to the intellectual um, tradition of the Dominicans because their our you charism you, you is... You think he's saying that you're not intellectual, Dr. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. You. I don't <laughs> no. know. I'm waiting I for know. my turn. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, but the charism of the Dominicans is veritas or truth. Yes. I was, uh -huh. I was into the, I just wanted to know more about the faith and being able to explain it and teach it and preach it. And yeah. that just that attracted me. Yeah. So... Um, because the uh, Dominicans are very much apologists, and they really they yes. have a strong mm -hmm. understanding. Yes, yeah, they're the ones that manage Catholic Answers out in San Diego. It's yes, run by over seen by the Dominican Order. Yes, and of course many of the teachers in Grand Rapids here were Dominicans mm -hmm. with the strong presence of Mary Wood. Yes, so it's a strong. So when did, when did you first? How old were you when you first got attracted to? Well, I uh, joined in two thousand four, so it was. Um, yeah, about 10 years ago okay. when I joined. I had, back in 1992, I'd read a book on Magigori, and that kind of put me, made me more deep into the faith, and it sort of grew over the years, and I yeah. just wanted to deepen the faith and grow in Christian perfection. Okay. And that drew me to the Dominicans. Okay. We need a little, for those people watching us here, we need a little explanation of what it means to be secular and yet still living a, a life of a, a Carmelite or a Franciscan or a, a Dominican. Um, do you take, you take a vow? Do you take uh, promises? What, what do you do? Franciscans take promises. You take promises. And we do also. You take promises. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we take promises to live a Dominican life. Mm -hmm. Okay. And just so our the viewers again can know that, what are some of the promises you make? And those? Well, basically mentioning our towel, our towel is what Franciscans wear, and it's the last letter of uh, the, the Hebrew alphabet. And St. Francis often would sign his letters with the towel because it looks like a cross. Yes. And so the Franciscans would wear this, and then our, our, our towel is three knots, and those are our promises that, that we make on, on, on poverty, chastity, and Obedience. Okay. Obedience to? To the Pope. Okay. Okay. Just want to be clear on that. And then poverty is not not living an uh, utter devoid of everything, but really living a simple life, correct? Living a simple life, not being so concerned about getting ahead with your riches, um, not worrying about if, am I giving 10% or not in, 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 in contributions. Um, we want to give... Uh, to the needy causes, right. especially the ones that, that are local, but, but international as, as well. Wonderful. But we try to live a very simple life. Yeah, pretty good to God. Not cluttered with trying to, being worried about your possessions. Right. You know, the more you have, the more you worry. Mm -hmm. some, it's, there's a simplicity mm -hmm. in being, living a simple life. It's like in, a, in the scriptures about the fellow with, with the barns and, and right. filling his house with his barns with grain finally. And, and now he's on easy street and he says, foolish man, tonight yeah. I'm going to tonight. take you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. How about you, Barbara? What kind of promises do you take for we, the uh, We Carmel? also take poverty, chastity, and obedience. Okay. Poverty, exactly. We're, we are in the world but not of the world yes. so those things um, we have what we need and a lot of times it's it's the self-denial yeah which brings out something better in you that a little more ge you become a little more generous yes. which st mm -hmm. john of the cross if you read his works there's one word that comes across in every single one is detachment yes so um we just kind of pull away a little bit but it, it brings out something better. Yes, it it, the love comes out more. Yeah. So When you start to detach from the world, you begin to attach. Exactly. To the sacred. To the sacred. Uh, to, to the, the Lord. And it really brings that. And one mm -hmm. thing I do want to clarify for people who maybe have a, don't have a profound understanding of chastity or celibacy. Oh, um, no, we're not celibate. No, I know, but you know, some oh, people... Well, some, <laughs> <laughs> wait a minute here. <laughs> but no, my, the reason I say that is because sometimes I get young people don't really understand the difference between that. Where yes. a, a priest or somebody with a conscript would live a, a celibate life. In other words, they would avoid any type of a sexual contact or anything like that. They would live ce in celibate. They wouldn't have a spouse or anything like that to live celibate. Um, but to live cha with it, for chastity, we're all called to live chastely. Exactly. And, and he, that really he, is a purity of spirit in, in our relationships. 
and to and honor the, the person that we're with and to look at the body as sacred and right. to really look at the theology of the body as Pope John Paul, St. John Paul wrote yes. about we live in these, these vessels that are really temples of the Holy Spirit and we're to be chaste. See, you, you can be celibate and chaste. Yes, of course. But um, to see the, that Christ is in that person will make you chaste. Yeah. It, it won't be something you use, something you, somebody you take for granted. Yeah, exactly. Once you realize that, that God's in everyone, it, it can only bring out that chaste in you. That, Amen. Amen. So it's, it's, um, Amen. it's a vow that's uh, it, it's not scary, it's not hard to do. Exactly. So. Mm -hmm. Bob, how about you? How about the uh, Dominicans? Well, the um, St. Dominic, and this is true also of the consecrated religious, nothing is under penalty of sin because St. Dominic wanted the order, people in the order to do it out of love, not out of, out of, out of obligation. Okay. But yeah, we're expected to pray uh, morning and evening prayer. Okay. Uh, attendance at daily mass or as often as possible. Uh, monthly confession, a recitation of the rosary every day as well as to be involved in an apostolate. Okay. Um, our, we wear black and white because the, the black stands for penance and the uh, white stands for purity. So. Okay. Okay. You know, I, I'm looking, we have three different symbols here of three different mm -hmm. uh, secular orders. We have the, the Tao, then you have for the Carmelites. Explain this one a little bit to us. This is the, the cere we call ceremonial scapular. Okay. We also wear the small brown scapular. Right. This we wear at our meetings um, and funerals of a third order member, um, any, uh, anything like th that we do as a community when we have our formation we wear it. Okay. But this is, it's, it's for Mary. These, uh, this is the cross, the mountain, Mount Carmel, okay. which leads to Christ, hence the cross. The, the star here, if it's depicted on our seal, is white, and that stands for Mary. Okay. These two would be black in, against a white background, which are the Elijah, the two prophets, okay. and Elias. So there it's, um, and then the symbolism of the crown of yeah. Mary. Beautiful. And on the back, I have an, a large M for Mary. Wonderful. That's beautiful. And if you look at your hand, you have an M in your hand. Yeah. Everybody has that. That's right. There it is. So, right there. You know, and so, basically, so you wear that when you're in community with in the community. other women? community. Okay. Yes. Okay. Wonderful. Bob, how about you tell, explain, that's a beautiful crucifix, you got a cross you have on there, it's not a crucifix, cross. Right, yes, it's, it's again, it's black and white and uh, stands, stands again for the uh, purity and penance. Um, we also have a, a white scapula that we wear. Okay. So again, it's, um, white is a big color in the Dominicans. Yeah, yeah, and it's really a sign of, of your devotion to the order that you're in. It's a wonderful That's thing. it. It doesn't make us who we are. No, but it's because a, we wear this. But but it's an outward sign. Exactly. Of an inward exactly. grace that's going on within you. Exactly. Yeah, that's a wonderful thing. Those that are watching us, give us an understand. How long? Once you make a commitment, say I want to at least try and become a Franciscan or a Carmelite or Dominican. What's the process? Mm. Uh, the, for the Franciscans, we have a three-year uh, formation program that okay. that we go through that goes through various stages and. You can opt out at any time, obviously, okay. but at, at the end of the three years, you're, you're asked to um, make a, a declaration that, that you do want to become a secular Franciscan okay. and, and, and do the promises. Okay. Um, and that's within the fraternity. So there's a fraternity, we've got like 30 different fraternities in the state of Michigan, and, and with, that's a region itself. And then we've got various regions throughout the United States and then throughout the world. So right. uh, the Franciscans are spread all over and one of, one of the largest religious orders because we have our own constitution and uh, statutes that are approved by the papacy. Okay, okay. So it's at least a three-year process it's a to three -year come through process. that. And there's no, you don't shorten that at all. It's, it's, no. it's, a, it's a journey they're on. The only time you shorten it is if somebody is, is almost like on their deathbed. Okay. Kind of like a baptism. If they okay. haven't been baptized, you can do it right away. Okay, okay. How, how for the Carmelites, Barb? It's a six year. Six year. We have an aspirancy program. But before they even enter or join, we really urge them to come and visit for yeah. a couple of months before and kind of see how we do these things. And we have a one year aspirancy program. Okay. And then after that, then after the one year, they receive the scapular. Okay. And then um, 
there's a two-year novice program which prepares them to make first promises. Okay. And then after that, there's a three-year uh, formation program before they make final promises. We feel this gives them enough time to really, if they want to commit to it, they, then we'll know that yeah. you know you really desire it. But um, the first year is really very important. It's it's a year I call it just of discernment. Yeah. Um, but then they're going through the studies and everything, just like. But everyone takes a little, you know, sure. little step own, higher. Their own, yeah. Their own time, own journey. Yeah. Um, I'm going to get to Bob just a minute, but um, are they given uh, much reading? Are they given reading to do and, and stuff when, in, when you're on this journey this first year? Oh yes. Okay. A lot. Okay. I, I teach aspirants, so. Okay. Um, this is just part of it. Okay. Wonderful. Um, so. Yeah, we have to we have to start like the history and then yeah. go into the spirituality of the Carmelites and so um, it, it's so filled, but it's just so wonderful. Yeah, it's wonderful. So. Bob, how about the Dominicans? What's the process there? It's about a, a four-year process. Okay. The first six months is called the initiate phase, okay. where they learn the basics, and that leads to reception, and they receive then the um, they receive into the order. Okay. And then there's the Canada C1, which is a 12-month program where they learn some of the church documents. Okay. And after that, they take temporary promises. And then there's like uh, basically 30 months of Canada C2, okay. which then leads to uh, final profession. Okay. Okay. With the cross and. Uh, okay. You know, you're, you're all saying that that what one word too that that's so important that discernment. Um, sometimes people say, well, you know, I, I want to be this or I want to be that or I want to join this. But I, I understand that, too. That first year is probably one year that you probably see more people either stay or leave because the discernment process probably comes very powerful that time where it's either more than they thought it was going to be, mm -hmm. more work than they thought it was going to be, or they really fall deeper in love with the, mm -hmm. with the, with the ministry that they're looking into. Have you experienced that? I have myself. Yeah. I mean... To discern. What does discern mean? Well, it means you have to distinguish mentally what you want to choose. Yeah. And when you come into this, and we're given, I tell them what is expected of them, and it's only because it helps, you know. So if they want to commit to it, this is, this is what the thing is. So they, even though they have the desire, it is hard. It is hard to say, am I going to commit to it? Um, the hardest thing for me, the prayer life was not hard, but this commitment to once a month, the meetings, yes. it was like, for the rest of your life, can I do this? Yes. And, and that's a necessity to stay community. It is very, because you have to have the formation, you right. have to have the studies. Um, it, it becomes, but then they, then they become, they're friends with the other community members and they, we all just, um, it, it's a bonding experience yeah. also. We all are there for the same thing. Yeah. I it's very so. important. I would think so. Yeah. Ray, how about the process? When you see the first year, I mean, what? how, how do the first year of Franciscans do coming into it? I think most of the Franciscans, they're Franciscans when they first enter into the program. Yeah. They, they have that Franciscan spirit, that joy. And I think that's the same thing with everybody else. You sometimes hear, what, it's a three or six, a four-year program. But it, there's a joy in that it, just to begin doing that. And so the more you enjoy it, the more you want to get into it. And yeah, there's a f three or four or six year, but it doesn't stop. It, it just no. continues okay. because you're learning more. You're, uh, you think you know it all, and then somebody says something, and it's, oh, I never thought of it that way. That's exactly. pretty neat. Yeah. You know, kind of like the scriptures. You hear the scriptures up at the altar all the time. All the time. And I heard that scripture before, but I never heard it that way before. Same words, yeah, but, it is interesting. but because of your life and your experiences, you learn more. And uh, we want to love God somehow the way he loves us. We know we can't approach, we can't get there, but we'd like to approach it. And community is very important to all of us. I would think as you're, and Bob, I want to ask you this too, but as you begin this discernment process, and we went through it too as, as in our diaconate program, they would call what's called scrutinies, and they would sit down uh, with a panel, and they weren't scrutinizing individually, but they wanted to be sure it was a calling and, and not just a desire. Because there's a different, if you, you might desire something, but you might not have the calling for it. Um, when you're when you were becoming a, a, a Dominican, a, a secular Dominican, did you feel it as a calling that God was calling into this? 
Definitely, yes. You feel as if you're entering into a family, into a way of life, and the discipline is going to keep you on the straight and narrow yeah. and grow in Christian perfection. Yeah, yeah. And how did your families all react when you decided you were going to, to go on this journey? How about you, Ray? How did your, how'd they react? Mm -hmm. I don't think anybody was really that surprised. Okay. And when we asked them to come to the time when we did make our, our profession, it was at a mass, of course. And uh, we had a number of our friends that, that attended because they kind of knew who we were and yeah. what we did. And, and they kind of enjoyed it. Yeah, wonderful. So. I'll be you, Barb. Yeah, same with me. I don't think anybody was surprised. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, they just kind of always went that way with the sisters. So I was... You kind of had that longing for a long time. I did, time. I did, yeah. 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 Bob, how about you? Yeah, I think it was um, kind of expected. And, uh, you know, meeting on Sunday afternoon, it's an easy time to meet. Um, doesn't put a lot of stress on the family. Yeah. So I think it was yeah. accepted well. So they, they were accepting of it. Yes. It, it kept you going on that, too. So... As you're on this journey, like I said, you never, it's always a journey. It's always more and more learning. I mean, I, I realize as a deacon, I know very little. And we're always in formation. Yeah, you're always, always. You're always learning more because you realize, how, you know, you never can captive, you know, bring all of it together. And right. there's so much head knowledge that we need to have, but yet so much of it is brought from wisdom for the Holy Spirit. And it really an understanding of we glean that wisdom as we grow older. Um, do you have ongoing formations for your people? as you go through, or is it just the meetings? As Franciscans, we have ongoing formation at our meetings. Okay. We start off with, with doing the office in the evening, we say some other prayers, and then we usually have some sort of formation, okay. or somebody come in and, and talk to us. Okay. Um, it's always uplifting, um, challenging, because we want to be of the world, even though we don't believe in the cultural part of it that's going out there. But everybody's searching for peace. Yeah. Everybody's searching for that, that peace of mind. And uh, I find it within the Franciscans, and I'm sure with the mm -hmm. other orders, that, that you, ha you have this sense of, of peace that you really didn't have before, and it grows when you're in community. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. The formation continues. We, we have a plethora of just Carmelite saints who we... Yeah. And we've been, uh, for five years, studying all the works of St. Teresa of Avila. Yes because of our centenary. Um, so we do that, we, uh, we study and uh, it's just, and I was thinking too, the three of us, how different uh, the spirituality is, mm -hmm. but it's one. Exactly. But this is the different personalities and to as, it's just what you're drawn to. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. So, and one is no, not greater no, than the other. Exactly, just, this is what I was trying it, to They're all edify yeah. God and bring us closer to the Lord. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, so it would, some, whatever you desire, that's, that's where it takes yeah. you. Yeah, and your ongoing formation for you also, Bob? Yes, yeah, we have ongoing formation at every meeting, but some of the people that come to the meetings, they sometimes are a little bit intimidated by, they think they're gonna get a PhD when they're done. Right. <laughs> and it's not, they shouldn't have that, that mm -hmm. apprehension because they're there to kind of learn about the the church and the order but and we don't have a lot of you know work required as yeah. far it's more very very minimal yeah and of course we're not going to write another summa like saint thomas so <laughs> yeah we're just we're really they never know we're here to, <laughs> preach, we're, yeah, we're here to <laughs> preach with our lives you know and, and be able to yeah. a pop, be, a, you know explain the faith of someone who needs it right and that's really what our, mm -hmm. our mission is yeah yeah, to mirror Christ. Yeah. That comes that comes in knowing him, which is I'm sure mm -hmm. you know, doing this I'm sure. Through prayer, it, that's how we know who we are. Sure. It's the only exactly. way. Exactly. Mm -hmm. If I gave you just twenty or twenty seconds twenty seconds, tell me, why should somebody want to become a secular Franciscan? Or what would motivate them? Just the joy of Jesus and, and, and wanting community and, and understanding what what the world is. Um, I just enjoy being a Franciscan because it's kind of like who I am and being outside in the world just gives me more of a, a good feeling yeah. being out there. Wonderful, wonderful. Barbara, how about you? How about the Carmelites? Oh, Carmelites. I love to draw them all in. Yeah. <laughs> it's the contemplative prayer life. I think that would draw someone in. Someone that wants to deepen their faith in this way. Yeah. Um, and I find that with... Uh, with the ones that are coming in. They have such fervent devotion, first to the Blessed Mother, and then right. 
they feel, oh, I can, maybe this way I can attain that way I'm supposed to live. That's, yeah. that's basically, I think it has to be in you first. Right. It has to be an inward expression yes. or feeling to being drawn yes. to that. Yeah. Bob, how about you with the, with the Dominicans? Well, I think the whole goal of the Christian life is to grow in uh, holiness and Christian perfection. And in order to do that, in order to imitate Christ, you have to know Christ. And I think the Dominicans is about study and learning. Yeah. And so to know him is to love him and to imitate him. Yeah. Mm. Of course, there's one secret that not everybody knows, but what? when Francis was becoming, when he got his order approved, it was during a period of time when there's lots of heresies going around. It was difficult to get an order approved, and he got his approved. And then Francis, in his holy robe, was going around with Dominic, who was, had his white robe and tall guy stature. He <clears throat> encouraged Dominic, go get your order approved. And he says, oh, it's kind of different. And he encouraged Dominic to go, and they were very close friends. Wonderful. Well, listen, I, I want to yes. thank all of you for being here because it's really a time when uh, I need to grow in my understanding, too, of, of these different orders. But it really is an understanding, too, of, of that I see three people here willing to live a countercultural life. And by the grace of God, you continue to do it, and only by the grace of God. So I want to thank you for your efforts, it's for being here, and uh, it's been a privilege having you here. Yes. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, thank you Barb, thank for being you, here. Thank Ray, you. thank you for and being here. I want to thank all our viewers for watching us. And as always, we give all praise to Jesus Christ in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.